To move further, let me define so-called locally Minkowskian reference system or reference frame. It is such a reference frame in the vicinity of a point x0 which has the following property that we choose a coordinate system such that in the vicinity of this guy g mu nu of x0 is at the mu nu plus corrections some corrections which I'm gonna specify a bit later and gamma mu nu alpha around that point as zero plus some corrections. So uh, uh, the idea uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that derivatives so that the derivatives of g or gamma are also vanishing at this point. But the idea of this reference frame, reference system, is very simple. Suppose we have any curved space, like any curved space. But in the vicinity of, of any point, of any point, when, when the vicinity is very small, the space looks almost as flat. Almost means that there are corrections, but it looks almost as flat. And then, in that flat fraction of this space, we can specify some coordinate system, because it's almost flat, we can choose locally Minkowskian reference system where the metric is like that and this guy is zero. So this is just a simple idea lying behind, behind this thing, but let me explain mathematically how one can do this fixing. So, suppose we have two reference systems in the vicinity of this point, the original K and another one K bar. Let me choose for both of these reference systems the origin at x0 and in, uh, introduce the coordinate xi, which is x minus x0, and xi bar, which is x bar minus x0. Then uh, I do a coordinate transformation from xi to xi bar. It means that xi bar is a function of xi. And because I'm in the vicinity, small vicinity of this point, I can do a uh, Taylor expansion of this guy, which means that psi mu, as a function of psi, is a mu nu times psi nu plus one half b mu nu alpha psi nu psi alpha plus of order of xi cube. So this is a, now using the transformation rule for the metric, it is not hard to see that g, g bar alpha beta as a function of x0 is transformed as follows, a mu alpha a nu beta g mu nu of x0 plus of order of psi. Well, this just follows from the transformation rule of the metric when I uh, uh, care only about terms which are, uh, and neglect the terms which are higher in powers in psi. So keep only the leading term. The transformation law rule for gamma is as follows, gamma alpha beta gamma, as a function of x0 is equal to a alpha mu a nu beta a sigma gamma gamma mu nu sigma of x0 minus b, so it's minus, this is a continuation, b alpha mu nu a mu beta a nu gamma plus of order of xi. Notice that from this fact b is symmetric. b nu alpha is equal to b mu alpha nu. That one has to bear in mind. Now, it is not hard to see that this guy, this matrix, is uh, uh, four by four matrix, so it has 16 components. A has 16 components. 
this guy is symmetric to by, uh, four by four matrix. So G has 10 components. So of course, using this 16 guys, we can fix 10 components of this to be equal at the alpha beta. That's exactly what is said here. So we transform the original reference system where this guy was complicated function to such guy up to, of course, corrections. Up to corrections. It's better to say that uh, not this guy is equal to uh, at alpha beta, but this guy is equal to at alpha beta plus corrections. So what are the remaining six transformations? It's very simple. This metric has isometries, has such transformations which do not change it. These are Lorentz boosts, rotations, etc., etc., and there are six of them which keep this form of the metric. So this is perfectly clear. Also, so there are three Lorentz boosts, three uh, rotations which keep this guy. And also, if we choose B alpha mu nu to be equal to A alpha gamma, 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 mu, nu of x0, we also can set up to these terms, we also can set this quantity to be 0. So when it is possible to do that, it is possible to do that when gamma is symmetric in this indices. It is possible to do that because this guy is symmetric in its lowercase indices. So let us look more closer, more closer to what is going on. Consider so-called torsion. Torsion. Torsion is just the difference of two gammas. Gamma mu nu alpha minus gamma mu alpha nu. So despite the fact that this guy and this guy do not transform as tensors, remember in their transformation rule there is a, a part which is, makes it different from a tensor, but the difference between these two guys does transform as a tensor. One can check it by explicitly looking at the expressions how these guys are transforming. So this guy does transform as a tensor. So now if we can fix a reference frame where gamma is zero, then this guy is zero in that locally Minkowskian reference system. But because this is a tensor, this is a tensor, it means that it transforms multiplicatively. So it multiplies by something. So if it is zero in one reference frame, in one reference system, then it is zero in any other. But now one can see that if it is zero, it means that gamma mu nu alpha is symmetric. So which is in accordance with I, what I have just said here. So the manifolds, manifolds where one, where the torsion is zero, where gamma is symmetric, and where one can use locally Minkowskian reference system, these manifolds are in literature referred to as Riemannian. So we continue with the definitions of uh, related to curved space times, to geometry, Riemannian geometry. So let me stress that metric tensor, G mu nu, and curvature, gamma mu nu alpha, are not independent. They are interrelated for Riemannian manifolds, at least. So let us see how it happens. Consider the following covariant derivative of differential of a vector a mu. So one can write it like this, d alpha g mu nu a nu. So using just the definition of this guy. So, and this, this, if we use Leibniz rule, this is just d alpha g mu nu times a nu plus g mu nu d alpha a nu. But to have uh, an agreement between different definitions and to have in mind that this is a tensor quantity, we have to have that this is zero. In fact, uh, this is a tensor quantity. 
something like T alpha mu. And we agreed that we can lower and higher indices with the use of the metric. Then, to have this equal to, to this, we have to have this to be zero. As a result, it means that metric has to be covariantly constant. G minu should be zero. This is very important relation, which establishes relation between metric and connection. Let me write this equation like this. D alpha, well, let us just use the de uh, definition of the covariant derivative. D alpha G mu nu is minus gamma mu nu alpha minus gamma nu mu alpha. This is just vertical line, slash. Here I just use the definition of the covariant of the derivative and I use the multiplication of gamma to the metric tensor such that I lowered some of the indices. Now, we can write this relation in different man manner by just reshuffling the indices. So it means that I can write another equation which is d nu g alpha mu minus gamma alpha mu nu minus gamma mu slash alpha nu. This is another way of writing the same equation. And there is a third way. Let me write it here. Zero is equal to d mu g nu alpha minus gamma alpha nu mu minus gamma nu alpha mu. So, we get three equations, actually on three quantities. Uh, we have to use the symmetricity property of this guy. Uh, as we know, this guy is symmetric. Is symmetric. So then we have algebraic equation, algebraic equation on gamma. So we can solve these three equations with respect to gamma to obtain the following equation for gamma. Gamma alpha mu nu is nothing but one half of d nu g alpha mu plus d mu g nu alpha minus d alpha g mu nu. So, or gamma with uppercase index alpha mu nu is just one half g alpha beta d nu g beta mu plus d mu g nu beta minus d beta g mu nu. Now we see that this connection gamma is nothing but the Christoffel symbol that have appeared in the previous lecture, at the very end of the previous lecture, where we found it appearing in the equation for the geodesic, for the extremal world line in space-time. So this is just nothing but Christoffel symbol. Moreover, as byproduct, we obtain another interpretation of the geodesic equation. Just to remind you, geodesic equation looks like this. It's just d over ds of a mu plus gamma mu nu alpha a u nu u alpha equals to zero. But this thing can be written as z dot nu d over d z nu. I mean, this derivative can be written like this. But this is nothing but u nu d over d z nu. But then this whole equation can be written as a result in the following form. It's u nu of s d nu of u mu of s equals to zero. 
So this is a geodesic equation. This is another form of the geodesic equation. And this just means that the, we have the following thing. We have a geodesic. We have a tangent vector to it. We take its covariant derivative, this, and then project on itself, on the tangent vector to the geodesic. So uh, geodesic equation just has the following geometric meaning, that tangent vector to the geodesic is covariantly constant along the geodesic. That's the meaning of the geodesic equation that we have now.